Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Channels, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our series called Labs. In the last video, we talked about uric acid in the blood. Today, it's time for uric acid in the urine, and let's get started. Please, please make sure to watch the previous video before this one. The question of the last video was, how can you tell if the patient is an overproducer of uric acid or an under-excretor of uric acid? Because both of them can lead to hyperuricemia. So, how can you tell the difference? Here is how you do it. You just measure uric acid in the urine. If the uric acid in the urine is low or normal, that's an under-excretor. He's not excreting that much. But if uric acid in the urine was so high, that's an over-producer. Because if my uric acid in the blood is high, guess what? My uric acid in the urine will be also high, assuming that my kidney is normal. Let me give you a 100,000 math tip. Uric acid is proportional with production of uric acid. Sure, if I'm producing more uric acid, let's say I have cancer, guess what's going to happen to my uric acid in the blood? It's going to go up. But uric acid in the blood is inversely proportional to the excretion of uric acid. Let's say my kidney is screwed and not secreting any uric acid. Guess where the uric acid is going to accumulate? In the blood. So there is an inverse correlation here. From 1 and 2, you can say that uric acid in the blood is proportional to uric acid production over uric acid excretion. Whenever you see proportional with something in the numerator and something in the denominator, you can just remove this sign and put an equal sign here and multiply by constant. Now, uric acid in the blood equals constant times uric acid production over uric acid excretion. And we can call that constant anything. Since I just came up with this equation, I'm gonna call it the medicosis constant. You don't believe me? Consider this, let's talk about pH. A totally different subject, but still the same concept prevails. pH is proportional to HCO3, which is the bicarbonate, which is the base, over H2CO3, which is the carbonic acid. Of course, this is the acid. So base over acid, this is your pH. You can remove proportional and add constant, and then you multiply. What's the constant here? The constant here is pKa. And then to get the numbers precise, get the logarithm of them. And that's your constant, baby. It's a piece of cake. As you might imagine, this is just common sense. Two doofuses came up with this, this equation and then added their names in the textbook. Their names are henderson hasselbalch equation. Where do you get your uric acid from? From purine metabolism. Look at this purine degradation. Oh my goodness, inosine, hypoxanthine, xanthine, uric acid, and the kidney. So uric acid production over uric acid excretion. Who produces uric acid? The liver. And if you have increased cell turnover, since the cell has a nucleus, the nucleus has DNA, DNA has purines, purine metabolism will give you uric acid. This will lead to lots of uric acid production and therefore hyperuricemia. Uric acid excretion, however, you can say thank you to your kidney because the kidney secretes the majority of uric acid, minority being excre excreted by your gut. Lishnian syndrome is a problem in the salvage system. We have talked about this in the last video. And of course, if I cannot salvage it, there's only one way for it to go into the urine. This is uric acid. Crystalline arthropathy includes gout. Gout is an inflammatory arthritis. Okay, aspirin, uric acid. You know already that aspirin at low dose is antiplatelet. At high dose, it's anti-inflammatory. And that's why the high dose is good for gout, because gout is inflammatory. High dose aspirin is uricosuric. It gets rid of the uric acid in the urine, which is awesome if you have gout. But low dose aspirin, man, it's horrible. It's gonna prevent uric acid secretion. The risk factors of gout were discussed before. And same thing with the etiology, could be primary or secondary. Primary, such as the kid with Lishnian syndrome, deficiency of the HGPRT ACE enzyme, which is hypoxanthine, guanine, phosphoribosyl transferase. Who named these things? Secondary, I could be an overproducer or an under excretor. How can I tell the difference? Just order urine uric acid. Don't forget that gout can be associated with uric acid kidney stones. It can also be associated with hypertension. And by the way, here is a chicken or the egg story. Hypertension can damage your kidney and a damaged kidney can lead to hypertension. So if you have a patient with both hypertension and nephropathy, it's really hard to know which came first. Same thing with uric acid. Uric acid can damage your kidney or a bad kidney can lead to high uric acid in your blood, and it's very difficult to tell 
who came first. Hyperuricemia is not the same as gout. It just means that you are at high risk. We have talked about the uric acid in the blood in the last video. Remember, this is hyperuricemia. This is hypouricemia. Look at these. What will these cause? They will lead to increased secretion of uric acid. You mean these are uricosuric? Yes. And look at the magic. Now it's time for uric acid in the urine. I've just told you that these are uricosuric. Yeah, if they are uricosuric, they increase excretion of uric acid in the urine. Therefore, they will increase uric acid in the urine. These three were here in the previous slide, but now they have shifted their place. What can lead to increase uric acid in my urine? Anything that increase uric acid in your blood, as long as your kidney is normal. Example, ingestion of purines, genetic inborn error of metabolism, such as Lysnian syndrome, cancers, and cancer chemo, hemo, lysis tumor, lysis rhabdomyo, lysis, or increased excretion, such as uricosuric drugs. Vitamin C can do it. Warfarin, estrogen, and don't forget aspirin and salicylates. But if you want to say aspirin, you're going to determine, is it low dose or high dose? I know that aspirin high dose is good for gout. Why is it good for gout? Because it's anti-inflammatory. What do you mean it's good for gout? It's uricosuric. Yep, so this is aspirin at high dose. That's how we do it. What will decrease my uric acid in the urine? A bad kidney. If your kidney is screwed, the kidney cannot excrete uric acid. Example, acidosis can damage your kidney. Alcoholism can damage your kidney. Alcoholism can lead to acidosis. If I have acidosis, the kidney has to choose. Would I excrete the uric acid or would I excrete the other acid? I cannot excrete both. They will burn the tubules from the extra acid. So acidosis can interfere with hyperuricemia. And eclampsia for an unknown reason. Could it be because eclampsia leads to end organ damage, including my kidney? It's possible. Any uricosuric agent will increase uric acid in the urine. No, duh, by definition, sure. If uric acid uh, is allowed to supersaturate and crystallize, man, you will get uric acid kidney stones. These are painful, but they are radiolucent, which means you cannot see them on x-ray. You gotta order the ultrasound. Good old ultrasound. It's cheap, but... You gotta be a competent person who knows how to read ultrasound. How can I prevent supersaturation and crystallization and thereby uric acid stone formation? Alkalinize the urine. This will prevent it. If you want to master pharmacology, check out my antibiotics course. It has 40 videos. You can download it today at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.